just remember it when I've been to Asia. I've been to China a couple of times. And they do eat small portions, but I'll always be like, yeah, I need to. <laughs> you're like, go to a restaurant and you'll be like, yeah, I need like at least three dishes. <laughs> and the biggest difference, you know, you know how you like. <laughs> oh my god, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know. Today's video is brought to you by Athletic Greens. Athletic Greens is a comprehensive all-in-one greens powder engineered to fill the nutritional gaps in your diet and support your body across the four pillars of health, gut health, immune support, energy, and recovery. How do they do that? Well, on the back here, you can see it's packed with 75 vitamins and minerals, which balance a perfect amount of micronutrients, absorptions, and taste to jumpstart your day. Yeah, and you might look in and say, oh, it's a bit green and weird. It's like, doesn't look like necessarily the most appetizing thing in the world, but it does taste great. And in terms of like all the goodness you're getting, I'd say it tastes, tastes bloody good. Look, I'm not some health and fitness YouTuber. I say that all the time. I don't really know much about health and fitness, but what I do know is that I don't probably have the best, most bestest, most balancedest diet in the world. But with AG1 by Athletic Greens, I do know that it's kind of filling those nutritional gaps in my diet, which is nice, letting me be more healthy than I probably should be. It's also gluten-free, dairy-free, paleo, vegan, keto, low allergen, and low calorie, less than one gram of sugar per serving, but it does taste surprisingly sweet. If this sounds like the supplement that you've been looking for, you can grab your own immunity bundle. That's a year of vitamin D plus five, uh, oh yeah, I've got this here. This is the vitamin D. A whole year in there it's in like a little dropper bottle well, let me see if i can take that out there we go i have an open one next door which i use i have it with my uh with my shake is that what you call it supplement ag1 i don't know um i have that with it also these travel packs are super useful they have exactly what you need for one day so you have that in there. Normally, you just put the scoop, but um, but um, shake. But if you're traveling, you got one of these. So you can get that free vitamin D and the five travel packs if you go to athleticgreens.com forward slash blaze. Again, a year's supply of vitamin D plus the five free travel packs at athleticgreens.com forward slash blaze. There's also a link in the description below. And now today's video. Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Brain Blaze. I, as always, am your host, Simon Amos here. Danny writes me a script, I'm gonna read it, I've never read it before, and then afterwards Sam is gonna add in some of the finest vintage memes that you've ever seen. And also some pictures to go along with today's video, because it's, uh, it's a picture-heavy one. It's disgraceful adverts from yesteryear. Hmm. Yes, let's carry on. Let's get into it. It's the turn of the 20th century, and the marketing team at Grove's Tasteless Chill Tonic are brainstorming a catchy new slogan for the 1990s. God malaria? Get some of this. No, that's a bit too blunt for these final days of the Victorian era. A tantalizing tonic for the totally tasteless twit. No, that's insulting the target audience. One fairly new guy nervously sticks up his hand to offer a suggestion. It makes children and adults as fat as pigs. <laughs> okay. Okay, let's go. So what everyone wants in their life. What, what's this doing? It makes you enormous. Have you have you never been obese before? Oh boy, you're missing out. You're missing out. It's comfortable, healthy, prolongs your life. All of these lies. Stick a chubby kid's face onto a fat pig and let's go to print. I mean, what the f is this? <laughs> Although we might enjoy looking back at a more primitive time when adverts could get away with any old shameful, deeply offensive hogwash, this particular advert for Grove's Tasteless Chiltronic could actually be considered perfectly reasonable when you consider the environment in which it was unleashed. Yes, it seems odd that the promotional imagery for this tonic, which the ad describes as simply iron and quinine in tasteless form. Mmm, iron. <laughs> Isn't the quinine the thing that that's why gin and tonics got invented? Because it tasted so bad that they had to mix it with tonic and uh, that made it taste good, like a gin and tonic. Wait, is the quinine in gin? No, I don't know. This isn't what this video is about. Let's just move on. Also, why is the iron in there? <laughs> It's focused on a weird, overweight pig child hybrid who seems perfectly happy with his girth. Okay. <laughs> 
as happy as a pig in a puddle. And the key message appears to be that both children and adults alike will just pile on the pounds with this Donica message. <laughs> oh my god, we've really solved all of the world's problems. It's like a hundred years ago. The biggest problem is that people aren't fat enough because there's not enough food, there's too many poor people. A hundred years later, which is basically no time in the history of humanity. Up until that point, everyone was hungry all the time. And just in a hundred years, basically everyone, the majority of people are overweight. A large percentage of the population are obese, at least in the, in the greedy world. I mean, like, you know, countries where there's lots of money. Um, it's crazy. It's in, in countries where there's a de- even not a lot of money, but a decent amount of money. Even the poor people are fat because there's, like, there's so much cheap, unhealthy food available. Well, that is very interesting. Please tell me more. A message that probably wouldn't fly in the modern era where childhood obesity has ballooned into something of a health concern. Yeah, just a little bit there. But by the close of the 19th century, this instant blubber tonic was selling out, was outselling Coca-Cola, and it was dished out as standard issue to British soldiers traveling to exotic lands. And with good reason, up until the 1930s, quinine was the only known medication for malaria. Wait, I don't understand. Why are we advertising this as being something... It, it, it's to prevent malaria, but the way we're getting people to have it is it makes them as fat as a child pig hybrid monster this is all very confusing it's also the ingredient added to tonic water to give it that harsh bitter taste not many people had the stomach to gulp it straight down first launched in 1885 grove's tasteless chill tonic provided a more palatable potion by suspending the bitter quinine in a flavored syrup to help the medicine go down and it proved massively popular for decades as a prescription for malaria chills fever and a general all-round wonder health cocktail the reason why the monstrous child pig advert ticked all the boxes at the time is because malaria could cause extreme weight loss and a child was seen as weak and feeble and poor if they had a slender frame oh how times have changed <laughs> like when i was at school it was definitely you know and i'm not proud of it not that i was like a particular part of it but it's like yo if there's a fat kid people are gonna call him fatso that's just how it was and now it's like oh my god that kid's probably got issues throughout their whole life and I'm always like, yeah, but we were children, which is an excuse, because it's like children are f-ing mean. <laughs> I don't want powdered donut pancakes and pie. All the kids at school call me fat. You're not fat. You're big boned. That's what I say. But now in the past, you're like, ah, look how skinny you are, loser. <laughs> I'm massively obese. In contrast, fat children were seen as a welcome sign of health and prosperity. It's like a flex that your kid's fat. So, one of, one of my kids is fat. Like, I mean, not in a bad way. He's a baby. He's like five months old. But our first kid is so skinny. She's like two and a bit years old. And she weighs, I don't know, like 11 kilograms or something like that. So, she's like fairly light. She's like on that on that chart you get. She's like definitely below the line. And our other kid is so fat that he's so far above the line. And he's like five months old. And he weighs like nine kilograms. He's an absolute beast. And you can see it on his body. He's like... (laughs) I'm assuming he's going to like thin out. Because I'm pretty thin and my wife's pretty thin. It would be really funny if we just have like... (laughs) Would it be funny if we just got like one super thin kid, super thin family, and then just one giantly obese son? Ah. That'd be great. I mean, amusing, but then I'd be like, oh my god, we got to worry about his health, and he can't eat with the rest of us, because, I don't know, we'll just eat whatever we want, and he'll be like, wah, 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 eating exactly the same, but somehow becoming enormous. Oh my god, it's not even that funny, let's move on. You have a poison in your mind, and the fact that you can't see it makes me so sad. So... The kids of the day were encouraged by their parents to down gallons of this syrupy stuff until it was coming out of their ears. The kids may not have entirely agreed in the claim that the tonic was tasteless, though. By all accounts, Grove's tasteless chill tonic actually tasted like ditch weeds, which, with the advert, with his advert, so the big... that had been put through a blender so the biggest problem with this advert is that it well straight up lied and another thing the slogan is unnecessarily cruel to pigs you shouldn't be fat anyway if your pigs are fat then you're overfeeding them stop it well there you go (laughs) fascinating fact there i learned about pigs i don't think pigs are generally i don't i don't imagine pigs as fat animals for some i think they're more associated with fat because they're always like like with their little their little snout thing in the 
in the trough, like licking up all those grains and shit, like greedy little fucks. They're not not because they're actually fat. I went to a I went to a, a like a a roast once, like a big um, pig roast. What's it called? Where you cook up like a whole pig and they bring this pig and it's just been killed and then there's these two dudes and they're butchering this pig and then they cook this pig. It was awesome. How dare you? <laughs> Vegetarians be like. <laughs> and I'm definitely going to get a couple of emails. Uh, but that's fine. I just mark them as spam. <laughs> Suicide is painless. Holy sh! What are we getting into? Imagine that you're a trendsetting woman of the 1950s, but you're having one of those damn nuisance days where you can't simply do a thing with your hair. I think most of us would concur that you now only have four sensible options at your disposal. Number one, make the change to Charles Antel Formula 9 Shampoo, the hairdressing cream containing lanolin. <laughs> Number two, drink a jar of poison and slowly die. Number three, put your neck in a noose and hang yourself until dead. Oh my god, what the f What the f is this advert? No. People, people will have a go. I'm gonna get another couple of emails. Simon, I saw that advert from back in the day, and uh, the women had their noose around the neck, and it reminded me of suicide. Uh, you got to put a trigger warning in for that. It's like, no, I don't. I don't have to do dick, by the way. And if I do, I'm doing you a favour. And you need to be, you need to have a stronger constitution. I remember someone sent me a lengthy email once. Have I told this story before? <laughs> Where uh, I'm like just doing a video and something really upsets me, so I'm like, Pfft, you know, like doing that. Or like, I do this all the time, like to my wife when my kids are going nuts. They're like, ah, and I'm just like, <laughs> and my wife always is always like, oh, you triggered me about it. No, she's not. And I that's that's why I married her because she's not like. <laughs> if she said that, I'd be like, what the <laughs> really, really? Come on, come on. Am I right, Peter? Um, what are we talking about? Oh, yeah, so someone sent me a long email being like, it reminded me of the suicide of my friends. And I'm like, look, I get reminded about nasty shit all the time throughout the day because I would look at the news or I would read something about, I don't know, a hangman. And you're like, oh my God, people do die. That's a reality of life. And I think the, pro the solution is not making me like take that out of my video or putting in a trigger warning. It's you, I don't know, maybe growing some larger testicles, perhaps, or the the the, the, the female equivalent of that. <laughs> oh my god. Am I going to get cancelled? That doesn't feel like an unreasonable thing to have. Look, I mean, I do a channel called Casual Criminalist. It's a true crime show. And there have been shows where it's got so f***ing horrible that I've been like, yo, I'm going to give people a warning about this one because it's f***ing intense. And I mean, you're already listening to a true crime crime show. So either it might, you know, I'm also kind of aware that content warning in true crime is also clickbait because people are like, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> sickos. What are we doing? Let's just get on with the video. Thank you so much for wasting my motherfucking time. Number four, get a gun and shoot yourself right in the fuck face. Now, some of these options might sound just a little bit extreme, but according to this advert from 1952, a perfectly natural reaction from a harebrained woman struggling to manage her own locks is to rapidly contemplate three different types of suicide. I mean, fair. When I'm having a bad hair day, I just like, I just like, it's not like I'm going to do anything, but I just kind of get my gun and I like put it in my mouth and I'm just like tasting it. Just like. That's a little gay. Hold on. Just tasting it. With the safety off. He's kinda gay. It's not gay, come on! <laughs> I think I'm just doing this to piss off that person right now. <laughs> Stop it, Simon. Be the bigger man. It's hard to be a bigger man, though, when I'm so petty. Thankfully, the more rational and wise men... Goddamn right. <laughs> Am I right, Peter? Working at Charles Antel are quick to make an intervention with their opening nine. Just one minute, lady. I think we can all describe those men as heroes right now. I'm just I'm just imagining like slightly older than old school Don Draper. The ad goes on to sympathize with the hair management victim by explaining, we overheard that plaint. Is that like an old school way of saying complaint? <laughs> Cringe. <laughs> if my hair looks such a mess one more night, I'll kill myself. <laughs> oh my God. It took me a while to grasp this, but I imagine that plaint is short for complaint. Did people really talk like this in the 1950s? I hope not. Good news, I never have to go there. It's in the past. However, the unusual suicide angle is then quickly brushed aside as the Anne goes on to explain the benefits of using hair cream with lanolin, which, let's not forget, is a greasy substance produced by the oily, sapacious glands of sheep. 
Lovely. I think I'd have taken my chances with a noose, to be perfectly honest. This is a rather extreme example of how women were often portrayed in the marketplace, in the marketing world, as simple, temperamental, and volatile creatures who were likely to have a complete meltdown when faced with the trauma of a bad hair day. Yeah, I mean, and times have not changed. <laughs> At least they were honest in the past. Am I right, Peter? But it might have been more interesting to at least pursue some more creative methods of suicide. When I'm having a bad hair day myself, I'm not the only one who finds myself harboring dark thoughts of climbing into the tiger enclosure at the local zoo while dressed up as a triple-decker bacon sandwich. <laughs> that, is, that is a lot more creative than me just being like, I just like to taste. You know, it's got that steely taste. Now, just before we continue with today's video, I do want to say that it is brought to you by Surfshark. Look, do you use the internet? Yeah, you do. You're on the internet right now. And, uh, of course, do you have stuff that you'd rather remain private and personal? Of course you do. Who doesn't? Well, let me tell you something. The internet's... Ay, ay, ay. Well, let me tell you something. The internet's a weird place. There are people out there who want to steal your information, steal your identity, and that can, uh... That can be really unpleasant and lead to all sorts of different problems. But don't worry, Surfshark has something called Hacklock. This searches databases to see if your information has been leaked out there. And if they find like a password or something, they'll be like, yo, yo, fact boy, get on it. Change that password, all right? Keep yourself safe. And also, I, this is great. Nice to have Surfshark like when I'm on a public Wi-Fi spot or whatever just to keep myself safe. But the best thing for me personally that I enjoy the most is uh, the streaming services. Like, you can fire up that VPN, open up, close your Netflix, fire up the VPN, oh, sorry, close the Netflix, fire up the VPN, open the Netflix, or whatever streaming service you want to do, and then you'll just find that whichever country you've gone to, you'll get a totally different library. So if you've run out of stuff to watch on Netflix, or you've heard from, like, a friend somewhere else in the world, it's like, oh, we've got this show now. You can check it out. I found that with the Mission Impossible movies. They were not available on American Netflix. But local Netflix, all the Mission Impossible movies, which was awesome. And I watched them all. And I forced my wife to watch them. She got three in and then was like, no more! <laughs> I'm excited about the new Mission Impossible movie. I had to catch up. This is not about Mission Impossible. This is about Surfshark, which maybe gets you access to Mission Impossible. Amazing. Look, it's all tied together. Surfshark's totally unlimited, so you can stream in 4K, all of that good stuff. No logs, of course not. It's a VPN. Great support, of course, because... Of course, I guess. 30-day money-back back guarantee if you don't like it. Get 83% off and three months for free through the link in the description below, or use my channel code... Oh, Blaze. Brilliant. Surfshark.deals forward slash blaze. Three extra months for free and 83% off. And now back to today's video. China in your hands. Back in 1967, the Rice Council of America were on a mission to get Americans to ditch their waffles and pancakes and lightly peppered pickled eggs in favor of a starchy alternative to serve up with your steak. <laughs> Who eats rice with steak? <laughs> what are you having? Yeah, I'll have the uh, ribeye and a side of f***ing rice. <laughs> I don't understand. I don't understand. And they would cut straight to the point with this advert, which attempted to encapsulate in seven simple words the benefits of gorging yourself. <laughs> I can't even read it. Danny, I mean Sam, just put it on the screen. <laughs> Did you ever see a fat Chinese? This is wrong on so many levels. Also, though, I mean, I know it sounds like, did you ever see a fat Chinese? It's like, you're saying, like, a fat Chinese. Like, a Chinese person is an object. Because you wouldn't say, like, did you ever see a fat British? But then again, you totally would. You totally, because you'd say, did you ever see a fat Brit? And you'd answer, yes. Did you ever see a fat American? The answer, <laughs> obviously. Yes. Yes. Yes! Come to Papa! <laughs> Most of the time. Um, but why does Did You Ever See a Fat Chinese sound racist? Because it doesn't in, like, elsewhere. Did You Ever See a Fat Asian doesn't sound racist? Why does that one sound like... <laughs> we're, we're <laughs> why does that one sound like it's making Chinese people objects? That's really weird. Only exists. 
in your mind. It's quite remarkable they managed to squeeze so much wrong into such a small serving. We seem to be we seem to be working on the idea that Chinese people are totally defined by an exclusive diet of rice which keeps them super slim. But it turns out that overweight Chinese people do exist over after all. What? Really? I've never seen a fat Chinese. Wait, am I misreading that? Or does it sound does that sound racist somehow? Cause now Danny hasn't brought it up. But I'm like, it does sound racist, doesn't it? But why? <laughs> Oh. Well, and whilst the Chinese diet is generally a bit less <laughs> Did you ever see a fat Chinese? Oh, maybe the Chinese people are just eating less. Could that be it? Maybe they're just less greedy. And whilst the Chinese diet is generally a bit less fattening than a typical Western diet, this has little to do with the rice and more to do with sensible portion control. However, the such. <laughs> I'm just remembering what I've been to Asia. I've been to China a couple of times, and they do eat small portions, but I'll always be like, I need to. <laughs> You're like going to a restaurant, and you'll be like, yeah, I need like at least three dishes. <laughs> and the biggest difference, you know, you know how you like. <laughs> oh my god, I'm sorry. <laughs> You know, you know how when you go to like a Chinese restaurant in the UK or whatever, and it's like, yeah, the food is a bit different, and generally, generally you prefer it because it's like more like your food. The biggest difference is not how the food is. The biggest difference is like in Asia, it's just so much smaller, <laughs> and you need like, to, you're like, oh, so it's like a tapas situation, and they're like, no, 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 this is the normal size of a portion, <laughs> like for a fucking child. We're so f***ing greedy in the West, it's mad. Holy Jesus. What is that? What the fuck is that? Oh, my sides hurt. Let's go. <laughs> oh, <shit>. However. <sighs> Jesus Christ. Okay. However, there's some truth in the idea that America wouldn't be seen. <laughs> However, there's some truth in the idea that America wouldn't have seen a particularly big helping of overweight Chinese people at the time, and this is why the ad seems incredibly insensitive under a contemporary spotlight. When Chinese immigrants first started flocking to the US from 1850 onwards, they suffered intense racial discrimination, were often exploited by employers as cheap Chinese labor. So the reason that you never saw a fat Chinese person isn't because they weren't intentionally maintaining a rigorous health routine, which involved rolling around in mountains of rice all day. It's usually because they weren't paid enough money to put any damn rice on the table in the first place holy sh i didn't even think of that that is bad that is worse and i feel bad for having to laugh about this <laughs> to be fair i was more laughing at myself and my greed and my culture's greed <laughs> also who serves a steak with rice f***ing right what oh lord again a fucking again nothing new nothing changed same old shit same old fuck baby don't forget my number Sounds like a song, doesn't it? We don't have to go back too far in history to have a look at what is probably one of the most disturbing advertising campaigns ever produced, and it's hard to believe that it didn't trigger a single alarm bell. During the 1970s, Love Cosmetics launched their new Baby Soft range of fragrances and beauty products, including soft talc body lotions and foam baths. Baby Soft sounds like something that would absolutely be a brand today. Like, I don't know, you go in there, there's all sort of like Baby Dream, Baby World, I, I don't know, like all sorts of sh baby soft would totally fit in there. Another thing about having kids, I think I went to like a drugstore, like a, 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 what's it called? Like a super drug or whatever, Boots in the UK. I think I went to like a Boots maybe four times in my life before I became a dad. And now it's like, I, I probably go there three times a week because my wife will call me on the way home from work and you pop into the store and get some baby wipes. And I'm like, yeah. Fascinating tangent, Simon. Thank you for that. Let's carry on. The new range, because I was always like, why are there so many drugstores everywhere? Who needs this stuff? Just what do you need? You need a toothbrush and some deodorant. Just get it at f***ing Tesco. <laughs> the new range appeared to be marketed at young women, but also at, I, I mean, obviously, women buy more stuff in drugstore. Because you go into the drugstore, it's like 90% of it is for women. There's like maybe some perfumes and some deodorants and occasional face wash for men. And then you've got a whole aisle donated to every f***ing shade of the rainbow of different I don't know, stuff you put on your face, your toes, your hands. 
Ah, oh, it's crazy. What? The new range appeared to be marketed at young women, but also at older girls who were beginning to grow up and explore beauty products for the first time, but still weren't quite mature enough to throw all their paper round money on the top dollar expensive fragrances. Yeah, that gets so expensive. And the whole range was formulated on speaking of fragrances. A few moments later. What's that? Have you tried my fragrances? Try this. Mm. It's good, right? It's Rotting Badger. A fragrance for men. It's Rotting Turtle. Oh, also a fragrance for men. I do have a female one. Hold on. A few moments later. Hey ho, it's Corpse Flower. Ooh, that is more feminine. A feminine scent for women. Brilliant. I'll just leave these around so you can, you can purchase them if you wish. Brilliant. No, I don't think I will. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's not really nice. <laughs> I made like two videos in a row the other day and I was spraying all my perfume and I get home from work and my wife's like, why are you wearing so much bloody cologne? <laughs> it's like, because I did like three videos. I'm <laughs> the first time I got this, she was like, why do you smell like another woman? I'm like, it's a, I'm making a perfume for the thing with the thing. And she's like, oh yeah. Hey, yeah, she believed me. <laughs> it's not that interesting. I don't remember asking you a goddamn thing. And the whole range was formulated on the concept of clean, fresh innocence, baby soft, quite simply, stank of babies. Or at least babies that have been sprinkled up with talcum powder to help eradicate that na their natural nasty whiffs. So, how do you go about marketing such a range? Well, here's how you don't bloody do it. You don't run a print campaign featuring a sexualized photograph of a pouting girl who can't be much older than nine. <laughs> Good lord, guys. Coming with complete with heavy makeup and big curls and lipstick. And then you don't go with a mind-bogglingly inappropriate slogan, Love's baby soft because innocence is sexier than you think. No! <laughs> Whoever came up with that ad, you need to be added to some sort of register. And by some sort of register, I mean the sex offenders register. Because that's what you probably are or will become. Alleged. Nah, this guy's long dead, whoever came up with that. Fortunately. <laughs> The ad goes on to explain, Love's Baby Soft is that irresistible, clean baby smell, grown up enough to be sexy. Who's <laughs> like, oh, nothing sexier than the smell of babies, you fucking weirdo. Don't take that out of context. Jesus Christ, I'll get put on a register. It's soft smelling, pure and innocent. It may well be the sexiest fragrance around. I feel uncomfortable even speaking about this fucking sick shit. Love Cosmetics weren't even finished yet. No, please tell they were with me. They were finished, Danny. Why? They also ran an alternative version of the investments around the same time, which evolved into a television commercial. Thankfully, this one featured a grown woman. But hang on a sec. It was a grown woman slowly licking a lollipop after appearing to have regressed into a baby state. As the camera slowly closes in on the vacant eyes of the babified woman, a male voice interrupts the tinkly piano-like background noises of a lullaby sleep toy to announce... <coughs> I don't want to even say this. Baby soft, with the innocent scent of a cuddly clean baby that grew up very sexy. Ah, oh, I feel dirty. Jesus, it's horrible. It could just be an <laughs> L, guys. Can imagine Don Draper in this meeting. What the fuck is this? <laughs> It could just be that Love Cosmetics got very mixed up with their target customers and the scent of their products and ended up turning very young children into sexualized objects while simultaneously turning grown women into babies. Or it could be that they were making a deliberate bid to capture the largely untapped <laughs> file market. I mean, honestly, it seems that is what the advert is targeted toward. Thankfully, they changed course during the 1980s, but it appeared that nobody batted an eyelid over the successful 1970s. 1970s?! Oh my god, for some reason I thought this was like a hundred years ago when... Oh no, it was TV, wasn't it? Oh my god. This is like after Mad Men. And even in Mad Men times, this would be like, what the f*** are you talking about? <laughs> Pour me a drink. This helped Babysoft become one of the most popular scents of the decade and well beyond. Babysoft, with notes of lavender and rosewood, heart notes of lilac and carnation, and base notes of curdled blood and chilled fucking spine. Happiness is a warm gun. A child's bedtime routine back in 1913 was not massively different from today. Teeth brushed, check. Bedtime story, check. Tucked in nicely with Teddy, check, check, check. An Ivor Johnson revolver placed tightly into your child's hands, <laughs> check. 
Ah, what is this? You shouldn't be advertising how your revolver can't go off auto accidentally by giving it to your child in bed. Holy sh**. My kid would figure that out. They'd figure it out. Well, that last one might not be every parent's glass of warm milk. But this advert, which popped up in Harper's Weekly, should reassure you that an Ivor Johnson safety hammerless automatic revolver is a perfectly acceptable accessory for the cooler crib. The copy of the ad claims that accidental discharge is impossible and goes on to give a somber warning that guns are not toys. Just in case you weren't sure what to do with the gun, the copy goes on to reveal they shoot straight and kill. You may need one only once in a lifetime. Buy now, so you will have it at that time. But after delivering this helpful warning that guns are not toys, the image depicts a very young girl in bed with her dolly cradling and Ivor Johnson's safety hammerless automatic revolver in her hands. And just to hammer the hammerless point home, bada bum 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 ba bum, the girl is even wearing a nightshirt which bears the slogan, Papa says it won't hurt us. Regardless of the promise that this particular revolver is completely safe, I'm not entirely convinced that Papa had the right idea of leaving a loaded weapon in the hands of an unattended child. To be fair, the girl does seem to be practicing good trigger discipline, though. But I'm worried that she seems to have either nodded off or perhaps died. It's lucky it's black and white. We don't give a fuck! Girl, fuck them kids, yeah. In fact, the image does appear to take on the eerie quality of a murder scene in which neither the girl nor the dolly make it out alive. Perhaps it was supposed to be more of a whodunit mystery than an advertisement for a real gun that children can play with. My money's on Big Ted being the silent assassin. He was never the same bear again after that day. His bad hair drove him completely over the edge. Mm. Below, there will be a link. Why not try it out? It smells amazing. Doesn't smell at all like babies, which is nice. Now, just before you leave today's video, let me tell you about another channel that I run called Decoding the Unknown. It's a show where I take a deep dive in some of the world's biggest mysteries, from what happened to the Roanoke colonist to the regular guy who found a listening device in one of his power strips. It's always a bit of a wild ride. You can find a link to Decoding the Unknown below, or just search Decoding the Unknown in YouTube and you will find it.